You talked about a few things. It was fantastic the way that you sort of went through that um, process. And, and you even answered one of the questions I wanted to talk about, which was that idea of well, how do you build a successful business online? And just, you distilled it down. I think that's definitely one of your skills is the ability to take the complex and make it simple. That idea of all you have to do is get some good keyword research, build up some content. It'll pre-sell your visitors when they come there. Make sure that your on-page criteria is right with that content that you do put up on on the website do some off-page criteria as in link building try and get quality links in and then look to monetize it really they are the steps i think one of the the biggest hurdles that people have when they're coming online is building that trust and the loyalty with the visitor when it is that they get there i know i think you positioned yourself very early on by the thing that you did with penny stocks like how, how do you build that trust you basically sold this product and then kept to your word and once it's sold out even though you've got people saying i want to buy it and i'll buy it for ten thousand dollars you're saying no i'm 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 sticking to my word. So I suppose that leads into how do you build? Because that's the biggest hurdle people have with doing online business with someone is that, that trust and that loyalty. Yeah, well, yeah, I once, uh, I once gave a talk to a group and told them basically, even if you are uh, the world's biggest thief, uh, the worst psychopath, the old saying of honesty is the best policy is not just nice in the offline world, it's a must in the online world. We're talking about the ultimate communication medium. So if you don't know how to treat a customer properly, if you're not dedicated to building a great product, you're going to have a very miserable life. I suppose you could earn a few bucks by continually turning over uh, very angry customers, but sooner or later they've got to add up in forums and all the places that people can go now to complain uh, until finally you're out of business. I can't imagine that anybody would want to actually lead life that way, but um, it certainly is a lot easier if you understand that basic concept of, you know, just be transparent, uh, be focused on creating a great product of what we call, you know, over-delivering. Your customers are very real people. You know, we sell Internet marketing information. You want to boil it down to a phrase that I, I hate to talk to, you know, refer to ourselves about, the same thing as we are a web host. Um, you know, at the end of the day, um, we need to host websites, but that's not what we do. What we do is all the software that's wrapped around that that enables people to succeed. So there are, there is the important ability. You do need, you do need to acquire skills that enable you to position yourself properly, but not in a misleading fashion. If you start to lie, if you exaggerate, uh, you will be discovered. And if you, it, it's just as much work to develop a great product and build a great business in an ethical manner as it is to be a thief. Um, you know, one of my favorite examples is the old movie uh, Heat with Robert De Niro and Val Kilmer. I don't know if you've seen that movie. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I will. Yeah, they're brilliant thieves. I mean, they rehearse for months. They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in capital expenses uh, practicing uh, armored car heists. And I remember looking at Dennis and going, you know, the amount of money and time and energy they're spending planning this, why don't they just start a business? The worst case scenario is if your business goes bust, you, you end up bankrupt. But if your thievery goes bust, you end up in jail. Why not build an ethical business? Uh, why not deliver great products? And yet, what do we see all around us, David? We see so many get rich quick, so many blatant exaggerations. You know, one of the things on site builder that we always talk about is proof the proof of success. You know, I mean, we document that proof in so many ways, so many verifiable ways uh, that people can, you know, read, follow, check. The case studies that we picked seven or eight years ago uh, are the same case studies that just grow and grow and grow over the six or seven years. I mean, how powerfully does that speak about site building? And nobody else does. People all come out with these crazy claims of how much money they make in their first month, but there's no documented proof of success you know that there's no such thing as get rich quick. If I had a get rich quick product, I would not sell it. Would you sell yours? No, so obviously you'd be out there trying to get rich quick off your own skin. Use it. Yeah. So who in the world in their right mind buys this? Well, they buy it because there's people who are brilliant copywriters who manage to convince you that this time is different, even against your better judgment. 
you know it can't be different, you know it's just not possible. If everybody could get rich quick, the world would be a different place. So, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a really interesting and complicated question, and the way to build trust is just simply to stand out by being honest, by really focused on your customer. It's so boring, it's trite what I'm saying, and yet so few people do it. Um, you know, everything, I have a weekly meeting with the head of support, and we go over so many metrics from, like, you know, the special address where people can reach me if they're really totally unhappy with the level of support that they've reached. I mean, that's a metric. How many people complain in the forums is a metric. I mean, everything is measured so we can improve it and bring it as close to zero as possible. Ten percent of the outbound emails are monitored by a human reader, um, and she gives it a score um, as to how good it is, including things like grammar. So every single element is constantly focused on improving customer support. Once you adopt that mindset, it really becomes very simple. How good are we? How do I know? Well, I need to measure. Once I measure, I can start doing things that make it better. So from your customer to your product. You know, we have a wish list, David, in terms of what people want. And that's interesting in itself because to some degree, as a product developer, you have to lead. You have to take the product into areas that aren't being asked for because it's not their job to see the next major trend. Um, and that probably is my single most important job. What is the next major trend? Whether it's RSS and how do I use that for site build it, or Web 2.0 and how do I use that for site build it, you know, the most important job is taking the product into those important new directions. But as well, an important job is listening to customers. I wish site build it could do this. This part of site build it bugs me. Yes, I can do it by doing this, but I would be much quicker if I could do it this way. And when enough people get on board and support a wish, then it gets onto our production schedule and it makes it out. Some of them are just, you know, ridiculously simple and just oversight. We can't be and we don't pretend to be the complete understanding mastery of all of our customers. So if you just admit that to your customers and go, I can't know everything you want, but I sure would like to know what you want, people respect you for that. Instead of the typical big company or, you know, famously politicians, you know, I did not have sex with that girl, just be open and say, hey, you know what, you made a mistake. We're going to fix it. We don't know everything that you could possibly want. Tell us. We're going to give you that. People respect that. You stand out by letting people know that you do care about them, not just saying it in words, but acting, delivering upon what it is that you're saying. So, you know, building trust at that level is the big part of your question. You know, the smaller part of your question in terms of, like, at a website, it's much simpler. It gets back to, again... 